Gas didn't lead our recovery, Keynes did. Government spending is what got us through the biggest economic crisis that we've had since World War II. Government spending has propped up demand, it's propped up employment, it's propped up our whole economy. But despite that simple fact, we've got Scott Morrison and Josh Frydenberg talking about gas-led recoveries, even though employment and gas actually declined, or business-led recoveries, even though private sector investment's actually lower than it was at the beginning of the crisis. So we know what's driven our recovery over the last 12 months, it's public sector spending. It's Keynesianism 101 to suggest that when the private sector's not spending, the government should step in and spend. That's exactly what Scott Morrison and Josh Frydenberg have done, announcing the biggest deficits that we've seen since World War II, and it worked. How good is that? Well, it's great that the government has finally come out and said, hey, you know what, we're not gonna worry about the surplus anymore because actually what we need to do is grow the economy. That's just what economists like Matt and I have been saying for I don't know, Matt, what, forever? Forever, yeah. <laughs> so it's great that uh, Josh Frydenberg has finally made it to this point. But what's more interesting, perhaps, for a lot of Australians is that this obsession with budget surpluses has actually been an Australian phenomena. Republicans in the US, Tories in the UK, they haven't spent the last couple of decades worrying about budget surpluses. In fact, they've been running large deficits. Matt, when was the last time the Americans had a budget surplus? Decades ago. In fact, uh, if we just have a look at the budget position of the, uh, the United States, this is their deficits, because they're mostly deficits, as a percent of GDP. So Rich pause there. So deficit means government spending more than it's earning. Exactly uh, right. Have they been living beyond their means, Matt? Well, according to, if you were listening to Australian uh, politicians, absolutely. Right. So here we've got them spending uh, a lot more, 8% of GDP, more than they were earning. And then here we've got this tiny little surplus. When was that? That was in about the year 2000. That was the last Clinton budget when Clinton was president. So Bill over 20 Clinton years ago. was a responsible economic manager living within his means. The very last one. And, and, and what's been going on here, Matt? They've just been getting bigger. So we've just had masses of deficits, nothing but deficits since, you know, we've got uh, Bush Jr. here, then we've got Obama, and then we've got Trump at the end. So Donald Trump, staunch Republican, the kind of guy that Peter, uh, that uh, Scott Morrison and Josh Frydenberg want to emulate themselves on delivered enormous budget deficits. Yeah, he had a huge tax cut for the top end and it just delivered a massive deficit. Sounds we, familiar. Yeah, and they, they weren't at all concerned with the deficit. And what about the UK? Well, if we look at the UK, the Tories in the UK, we see a similar thing. So again, almost all deficits, except for a couple deficits of Deficits as far as the eye can see, As Matt. far as the eye can see. And we've got 2020 here Ooh, in the UK. So we've got the recession. So, so who's in charge at the moment over there? That would be uh, Johnson. He's a Tory, isn't he? Another one. And who was it that delivered this surplus? This is Blair. Oh, wow. Tony Blair. This is confusing. Yeah, <laughs> Labor, recklessly irresponsible, <laughs> apparently. But they're the ones that last um, had a surplus. Again, around 2000. They had three, um, three years of surpluses. And since then, it's been nothing but deficits. Yeah. Now, let's be clear. A budget surplus isn't the be all and end all. And a budget deficit isn't some big scary thing. What's happened in Australia is we've defined, in fact, Peter Costello redefined successful economic management as delivering a budget surplus. Now, sometimes it makes sense for governments to run surpluses, and sometimes it makes sense for governments to run deficits. Surf uh, surpluses aren't good, deficits aren't bad. What matters is whether they're appropriate for what's happening in the economy at the moment. And you know the big thing, Keynesian economics, the, the key kind of point of all that is when the private sector's not spending, when, when individuals, when households, when industry aren't spending, that's when the government should step in and spend a lot of money, which is exactly what's happened in Australia. Uh, so it's good that the government abandoned, what were they, back in the black? Back in the black, well they talk about a balanced budget, which is actually just a small deficit. Right, so anyway, they, they had this whole budget emergency when Tony Abbott uh, was opposition leader and Joe Hockey wanted to crush spending on poor people so we could get back in the black. It didn't happen, of course, but Josh Frydenberg and Peter Costello 12 months ago, 18 months ago, were adamant they needed to. 
they've now admitted, actually, we don't need to. And they're right. And we should congratulate them for that. But it's really important to understand that it's not just that Matt and I are right. Um, we've been saying this for decades. So is every conservative in the US. So of the Tories. It's just not a big deal. But it is a big deal that here in Australia we've abandoned that rhetoric and it is a big deal that Keynesian stimulus worked here so effectively. So Matt, let's take a look at what has actually driven the recovery in, in Australia, given that we know it wasn't gas that went backwards. Yeah, so let's look at uh, the Australian GDP. And so basically, I've just indexed it. So we'll ah, just... fancy index, what are you talking about? So indexing is just looking at the movement in GDP. So forget so, about the level. So we've just said, here's what GDP was. We've called it 100, 100 yep. units, doesn't matter what. Yep. It was roughly flat in March, then we had the big recession, it fell. So this is COVID. slowly recovering. This is, this is the COVID recession coming along and we can see that GDP fell quite significantly, nearly 10%. That's a big recession. Biggest, biggest drop we've ever had. And now it's recovered. So but are we back to where we were? No, we're, we haven't quite reached where we were originally. So we're not quite back to 100. So this is a bit lower than that. That's right. All yep. right, good. So that's GDP, that's total amount of stuff that we've made. All right, let's see what makes GDP up. How yeah. are the bits gone? Okay, so economists tend to think in bits of the economy. So the first bit we want to look at is household spending. It makes up about 60% of GDP, the biggest bit. Right, so it collapsed, yep. not surprisingly. So it collapsed even more than GDP. So it fell because people lost their jobs and people who lose their jobs don't spend much money. And they were worried. And uh, people who didn't lose their jobs were worried. And they were locked down. Right. And it's been recovering, yep. and but it's still significantly lower. Households are spending less today than they were back in December 2019. That's right. So a year ago, households were still spending more. So to be clear, household spending can't have driven our recovery because it actually hasn't done as well as the economy overall. That's right. So let's look at another bit of GDP. So the overseas sector, right? So this is exports. So the other way that we could have had a recovery is that the rest of the world could be booming and wanting to buy lots of our stuff. Not so much. No, not so much at all. So <laughs> again, are, are they having recessions too? Yeah, who, who realised that a pandemic affects everything? So our exports can't drive our recovery because everyone else is having a recession. That's too. right, so exports are significantly lower than they were in December 2019 but, before but the pandemic. iron ore prices are up. That's right. So little bits of it might be okay, but overall our exports are way down. How are education exports going? Not particularly well, okay? If you're a foreign student trying to study in Australia, you might have a little bit of difficulty getting into the country. So there's more to exports than the mining industry. Absolutely. And that's what we can see here. All right, what other bits have we got? So we've got another bit. We've got private investment, so a business-led recovery. So this red line is private investment, so companies building new factories, installing new equipment, that sort of stuff. Expanding their output. Right, and it's lower than it used to be. Yes, right. and, and also slightly lower than GDP. Right. So again, our recovery isn't being driven by private investment. So we haven't got a, we haven't got a household spending-led recovery, we haven't got an export-led recovery, we haven't got a private investment-led recovery. So What's, we've got one more bit. What so could presumably, it be? The big reveal. Ready? Government spending. Government spending, all right? The only part of the economy that has actually outperformed or been uh, is now higher and has always been higher since December 2019. So this means that governments are spending more today, contributing more to GDP than they used to. That's exactly right. So Everyone else is contributing less. Yep. They're contributing more. So what it also says is that GDP would be a lot lower if the government had just, say, continued to spend at the same amount as December 2019. And is it because they're spending it all on the gas industry? No. <laughs> so it's not gas-led? It's not gas-led, because then that would come up in private um, business. Right. So it's not a gas-led recovery, it's not a business-led recovery, it's a government spending-led recovery. Like every recovery from a recession in modern times, it's a government-led recovery. Right. Well done, Keynes. Okay, so can we now look at that in terms of the change? So this is the change since December 2019 to December 2020, our latest data. And we can see, as we saw in the last graph, that GDP is slightly down, all right? And that um, consumption is down, that investment is down, and that net exports, so net exports is exports minus imports, that's down. And the one that's up is government spending. So if government spending wasn't up, 
that means GDP would be even lower. Yeah, we would have a, a far slower recovery. Basically, this recovery is being driven by the increase in government spending. So there you have it. It only took 20 years to abandon this idea in Australia that if only we had a budget surplus, everything would be all right. It's only because we've got a big budget deficit that everything is all right. It's not our recovery hasn't been driven by consumption. It hasn't been driven by private sector investment. It certainly hasn't been driven by net exports. It's been driven by government stimulus. And importantly, this is the quarterly GDP data. Importantly, this actually understates the role of government because government's actually been giving tax breaks to encourage investment. Government's been transferring money to different groups to spend. This is just the change in government spending in the national accounts. What they've actually done through the budget is actually bigger than this. So it only took 20 years, but Matt, you were right. I was right. Pretty much every progressive economist in the Australia Tories was right. right. And as luck the would have it, the Tories, the Republicans, and now Josh Frydenberg and Scott Morrison, they all agree too. Who well, says economists can't agree? Welcome to the party. <laughs> So Matt, it's as if a whole bunch of things were told about the economy and how it works are just nonsense. Yeah, as we've just discovered that, you know, that the fear of deficits is just rubbish. Well, luckily I've written a whole book about how to decode economic nonsense and political spin. Econobabble's all about how in Australia we use fancy economic language to dress up self-interest as national interest and to tell everybody that we can't do the things they want to do, that we can't afford to do the things we used to do, and that we have to cut taxes, run budget deficits and, and, and lower everybody's wages. We're one of the richest countries in the world and what we can do is anything we want. And in Econobabble, hopefully I spell out how and why that's the case. Matt, what do you think? I think that if you're being confused by economists, don't leave home without it. <laughs> Thanks for watching The Everyday Economist. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to get more episodes and watch the next episode here.